Okay, all right. Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your day, you're relaxing now. Um, I just finished my shift of consulting and I want to go ahead and pump out this video, all right? Now, what we're gonna be learning today is the I Am 608 Pro Top 10 Questions of the Week. So for those of you who don't know, this is just a uh, compilation of questions that I received from my personal clients and people who book consultations with me. So. Take notes so when you go out in the field, you'll have that extra edge on what to do in certain situations, okay? If you're new, again, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden, and I'm an Autel Diagnostic Tool Consultant. Now, what I do is I help people align them with the right tool, but more importantly, I'm not just selling a tool, I'm selling transformation, okay? So if this is you, if you are on the fence and want to know how I can help you, you can go book a console with me and... Uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Now, question number one. How do I know if the key procedure is done via OBD or on the bench? Okay, so this is a good question. Now, the first way to validate if it's um, via key or on the bench is if the vehicle you're working on, it's just not possible to do via OBD, like um, on some Audis or VWs, okay? Um, if it has a VAG EMO4 system, you're not able to do that directly through the OBD, all right? You have to extract the instrument cluster, get the XP400 serial programmer, and read that EEPROM data that way to relearn the key, okay? So certain vehicles, it's just not possible, and you kind of learn this as you go. Um, the other method of verifying if it's done on the vehicle or on the bench is if the OBD method is risky. Another example would be on VW. Um, there is a button when you're doing an all keys loss, it will give you all keys loss on the bench or all keys loss via OBD, okay? It's very risky to do it all keys loss via OBD on, on certain VWs as you might damage uh, an ECU or something like that, okay? So that's another way to, to validate if you can do it on the bench or the OBD. And the last way, if the vehicle is not present. So let's say, for example, you wanted to start to do more EEPROM jobs. There are certain vehicles that you don't need to actually be there to do the procedure. So I'll give you a prime example on Toyotas from 2001 to 2006. They basically um, have in the engine control module the immobilizer data. Usually that's separately on a different module. So you can't do these vehicles via OBD. So a prime example would be someone would have to mail you their ECU. You'll get the XP400. You'll you know read the EEPROM data, delete the master key data, the slave key, key data and then you'll virginize the the tool get it back into registration mode then you can send it back okay so those are scenarios um, if you can validate if it needs to be done on the bench or OBD okay next question um, on VW and Audi what is a dealer key okay now I, I think I went through this before but I'll reiterate so all a dealer key is, is a pre-coded key specified to that vehicle's VIN number. It's a pre-configured key specified to that VIN number. An example would be when you're doing a, a key procedure on an Audi or VW, there's going to be a point where it's going to ask you, is this a dealer key? Okay. Now, if you purchased your key from the dealer, they already pre-configured it to the VIN number, so when it asks you that, you're gonna click no, okay? But if you purchased an aftermarket key, okay, that's unlocked, all right? It hasn't be pre-configured, so you're gonna click yes, I would like to make a dealer key in that situation. That's the only way you can relearn keys for a VW. It needs to be pre-configured, and they use that term dealer key, okay? So that's all it is, it's a pre-configured key. All right, 
Question number three. On a 2008 Toyota Helix, um, can the IM608 do an input injector compensation in pilot quantity learning? Okay. All right. For this particular vehicle, you can do the input injector compensation. Okay. But the pilot quantity learning is not required for this VIN number. Okay. Here's why. <clears throat> this vehicle was produced September 2008. Okay. Now, depending on the vehicle specs, all right, if the vehicle was produced after May 2005 with an EGR valve or uh, August 2010 without an EGR valve, okay, um, those are the times where you're going to need to do the quantity learning procedure. Other than that, you don't need to do it. So it's, it's, it's a VIN specific thing, okay? Next question. Can the IM608 configure a used BCM module for a Nissan, is it Taita, 2008? Um, all right, yes. Just make sure that the used donor module has the exact part number, year, make, and model as the original, okay? If you have all those things matching, uh, then it is supported, all right? Question number five, give me any advice and function route in order to do an all keys lost on a 2004 BMW 54i. All right, so if it's a CAS2 system, you can go ahead and do it through the OBD. Very simple. If it's not a CAS2 system, then you're gonna to need to take out the EWS module to read the EEPROM file, and then you need to load the uh, file to learn the key. Okay, and the IM608 does a pretty good job walking you through that procedure. Okay, next question. Can I can the IM608 add a used push to start key to a 2008 Audi A3 Quattro? All right, so generally speaking, you can only use a blank key or a dealer key. Okay, generally speaking. Now, in terms of if the IM608 can add the key to this particular vehicle, it's really dependent on the instrument type of the vehicle, okay? So if it's an NEC35, then you can add the key, it is supported. But if it's a JCI instrument, then you cannot do it, all right? Next question. Can you code a used ECU module on a 2013 Audi A3 with the IM608? Uh, the answer is yes, it's supported. What you're going to do is you're going to go into the expert mode. Uh, and then I think it's emo adaptations. And then emo for replacement and then uh, the engine. Now, what you need to remember is you have to get the pin code and the CS code from both engine control models to do this procedure. Okay, it's kind of complex. Um, I might have a video on it, I might publish it later, but that's what you need to do to do this procedure. Okay. Um, question number eight, W207 EIS module, trying all key lost network editor. Um, I'm working on a this Mercedes, but I get a network error code 11205. I'm connected to the house Wi-Fi. Any ideas what the problem is? Okay, so this is the process that I did. First, we validate his internet connection. That's obvious. You got to make sure you have strong internet connection, which was good on his case. The second was I wanted to make sure if the Autel uh, servers were, were up and running, which they were. And then the last thing I suspected was if his tool didn't have an active subscription. Okay, in his, his case, it didn't. So we registered the tool, got that subscription going, and then he was able to do the, do the procedure. Now, what I'm learning is uh, you don't need an active subscription until you get in situations like this. Okay, it's not mandatory, but I, I'm starting to see that there are particular uh, vehicles that need to connect to a server, and that's probably when you need to have a valid subscription. Okay. So yeah, question number nine, 2001 BMW 
330CI, all keys lost. And this question, this customer says, I have a potential customer inquiring about adding a key on a 2001 330CI BMW. I know there's other ways of programming a key what's using called the AK90, but I don't have one of those. If you can shed some light on this, I'd really appreciate it. All right, so this is an AK90, and uh, I, I think maybe he couldn't find any uh, content of the IM608 um, being used to do this procedure, but it's pretty much the same thing, okay? Um, all you're gonna need is the XP400 Pro and an adapter called the APB114 adapter, okay? And uh, you can see this arrow, this is where you're gonna go connect it. Like it's, it's pretty much the same feature. And then <clears throat> what I'm learning guys is the Altel is a great staple tool. It's a great tool to have as a foundation, um, but It'll do like, let's say 85 to 90% of the work. And then you'll have like little devices like this that are just efficient on that one particular thing. So if you're new to key coding, you're gonna have to acquire these things. And I'm really good at, you know, helping people uh, have that tool strategy, okay? That's just the reality because keys are always, the systems are always getting more complicated. All right, and question number 10, ELV simulator Ben C300. All right, so this customer says, my client has a Ben C300 where the electronic steering lock failed. He per I purchased an ELV simulator and want to learn how to program it with the IM608. Can you help me? All right, so the good news is you can do this. And this is a very, very, uh, let's say, it's a very common problem with with Mercedes. So if you learn this skill, you can make pretty good money. What you're gonna do, you're gonna select Mercedes, Expert Selection, ESL Tools, and then you could, you're going to select whatever EAS type that you're working on, okay? If you have the G-Box, you can cl click yes. If you don't, you can click no. And then um, you just check the operation guide on the left-hand side. Now, uh, my engineers told me normally, um, the OE, the ELV needs to be an original uh, OE one, okay? The third-party emulators might have a probability of um, not being supported with the IM608, okay? So what I did was I documented uh, what we support so far. The W204, W207, W212, W169, W209, W211, the W208, and the W210, okay? So this is what we can do, okay? Now, on a serious note, um, due to the way our economy is going, I feel as a uh, community, okay, we need to up our game, okay? Whatever you're doing now, you need to up your game. And the reason I say that is because, um, some people, some of my clients, they told me work has been slowing down, so we need to learn how to solve different problems that maybe don't require uh, the customer to come to us. So let me give you an example. Uh, the Toyotas, all right, if you're doing an all keys loss on a 2001 or 2006 Toyotas, they could mail you uh, that module and you can do that at home or anywhere, okay? Those are the type of skill sets we need to learn. And this will help us, um, you know, sustain our business while, you know, maybe somebody is, some areas they're, they're not able to uh, open their doors or something like that, you know, for business, okay? So if you guys need help with that transition, if you haven't bought your tool yet, book a consultation with me. Um, if you would like to learn different, you know, skill sets, go ahead and book your consultation. But Think about it, guys. Like, think about other ways, other problems you can solve where they can send us these components, and you know we can do it on the bench. That's that's the way to go. Even for flash programming, um, also is coming out with some really really cool stuff. Where, let's say you know how to do flash programming, um, 
there's an adapter that you give your 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 customer and you can you know basically run the ford like program through their autel machine and and flash program it remotely okay so think about this guys and uh with that i'll close this and we'll take it uh, again next week okay so you guys have a good one and i'll talk to you later take care bye